There are many reasons to love pavlovas, and I have to admit, I have become a huge fan of this dessert. And I'm gonna share with you the five reasons why you need to learn how to make one, aside from the obvious, it's a sweet, magical, marshmallowy meringue surprise that's light, airy, crunchy, and soft all at the same time. Maybe that's the only reason you need, but if this is your first time making pavlovas, you're in luck. I made enough mistakes when testing this recipe out, but it's totally worth it. Everyone went absolutely bonkers over the pavlovas I made. Like this one I made for my son's teachers at school, and this one, and the one I made for my in-laws, and this one I made for Mother's Day. You get the idea. But before I jump into this recipe, I want to say that pavlovas do not need to look or be perfect. That's the beauty of pavlovas. They'll crack, they might not even be smooth. I mean, there are so many videos on YouTube, and if you're even worried about how it looks or not having an offset spatula or a piping bag, pavlovas are supposed to look a little messy. They all still turn out really delicious. So embrace the imperfect. Let's do this. Start off by preheating your oven to no more than 350 degrees. You'll find out why later on. Now reason number one to make pavlova. It's basically two ingredients that you very likely have in your home right now. Egg whites and white sugar. For this recipe, grab five eggs and separate them in a bowl. I wanna make sure the bowl has no grease in it. Any fat, including egg yolk in it, will prevent the egg whites from whipping up properly. So clean it with a little lemon juice or vinegar. Use whatever method you want to remove the yolk. There's the shell to shell, and one of these separators like this one, or you can use your hand. If you do use your hand, like I'm using, just make sure they are clean because of the grease thing I mentioned, disrupting the egg whites from foaming up. Your eggs can be room temperature or not. Egg yolks are easier to separate when colder, so you can separate it and let it go to room temperature. That's up to you. I found that they whipped up fine in both situations. If you're wondering if you can use egg whites from a container, I did try that, but I found it didn't whip up to stiff peaks, nor did it hold its shape very well. I mean, don't get me wrong, it still turned out delicious. So if you do have a carton of egg whites in the fridge, you can use it. Just add a fresh egg white into the mix and it'll hold its shape better. I'm gonna measure the egg whites so I can get the proper ratio of sugar. This is important. A proper ratio is anywhere from one to one to two to one sugar to egg whites. Just know that the more sugar makes for a more stable and whiter meringue. There are three types of sugar you can use. Regular, fine or super fine, and powdered sugar. Fine and powdered sugar are great because they dissolve faster, and I find that you can use regular sugar and you can put it through a food processor if you want. Totally optional, but worth it. And I also like to use a bit of powdered sugar for this recipe. 10% of powdered sugar is cornstarch, which helps stabilize the pavlova. And you can always add cornstarch, which is recommended, but using powdered sugar gives you the benefit of dissolving quickly and then having an added stabilizer already. In this recipe, I'm going for a 1.6 to one ratio, give or take. One of the reasons I chose this ratio, close to but not exactly two to one, is to make sure all the sugar gets dissolved and helps avoid that grainy texture. In the description below, I will adjust the recipe for those that don't have a kitchen scale and can't measure egg whites. But basically, I found out that when measuring egg whites from a variety of eggs, both medium and large, they range from 26 grams to 35 grams of egg whites. So 50 grams or four regular tablespoons of sugar per egg will get you into that one to one to two to one ratio. Also, if anyone's curious about the science of how egg whites make that magic foam, there's a great blog about meringues that talks more about it, and I'll post it in the description below. All right, reason number two, it's super quick to prepare. We're basically just going to whip this up. I recommend using a KitchenAid if you got it, but I know not everyone does, so you can use a good hand mixer. I did notice that this hand mixer wasn't mixing fast enough, so if you have an old mixer like mine, and I think my wife got this for like 10 bucks, your egg whites may not reach stiff peaks. Start on low speed, and for the first one to two minutes, let them start to bubble, and then gradually over the next minute or two, go to medium speed and then to high, until you get to that nice sea foamy stage, just before the soft peak stage. 
Now you can add the sugar gradually. A little bit about eggs and sugar. Egg whites are 90% water and 10% protein. Meringue is basically whipping air into egg whites to add volume, and the 10% of protein unfold and cross-link, and the dissolving sugar into that 90% water not only adds sweetness, but stabilizes the structure, making it dense, silky, and smooth. By doing it at the seafoam stage and not the soft peak stage and adding it slowly, you're giving the sugar in that water time to dissolve. Now that all the sugar is incorporated, you can add a splash of vanilla for flavor. Reason number three pavlovas are great is you can honestly add whatever flavors you want into the meringue. I typically go with vanilla, but I've added lemon zest and lime zest, and you can do almond, orange, or rose water extracts, and espresso and cocoa powder. You could add a drop or two of food coloring if you wanted. It's completely up to you. And now we add the stabilizers. Here are a few stabilizers that will help the structure and form. You can use any available, which are also staples in your pantry or fridge, with the one exception being cream of tartar. Not everyone has that, which is a powdered form of acid. I happen to have some cream of tartar, so I'm going to add about 1 8 of a teaspoon and then a little squeeze of lime juice. I don't need to add cornstarch because I use powdered sugar, but if you didn't, adding two teaspoons of cornstarch will help. Again, notes and amounts in the description below. Now just mix it in for another minute or two and fold it in so it's well incorporated. You want to get to the point where there are stiff peaks. Once you reach the stiff peak stage, set up your baking sheet. You can dab a little bit of the meringue in each corner to set up the baking sheet down. Then with a spatula or spoon, just plop the meringue into the center of the baking pan. You can draw a circle shape if that helps and flip over the baking sheet and use that as a guide, but it's not necessary. What does help is having hot water to clean your spatula. Shape the pavlova as best possible. The firm meringue should hold its shape and you can do your best to make clean sides and little peaks. Do not be afraid to clean away excess meringue. There is plenty. So keep shaping and molding with a clean spatula or spoon. Then make a little well in the middle to hold all your toppings. Don't fuss over it too much. And when ready, pop it into the oven and lower the heat immediately to 190 degrees Fahrenheit for 65 minutes for the initial bake. Here's a tip. Don't preheat the oven to 400 or above. I didn't know it, but I gave my pavlova a tan because of how much heat there was already sitting in the oven and how long it took to go down to 190. Once that initial bake is done, you should turn off the oven and just let it sit there and rest for as long as you can, for at least one hour, but overnight if possible. You can do whatever you need to do now, prepare the toppings, or if you're having guests over for dinner, you can use the stovetop. After you let it rest in the oven, you can take it out. Reason number four to love pavlovas is you can top it with whatever you or your guests want. It's best to top it just before serving, and it's classically served with whipping cream and fruits that are a little tart to offset the sweetness. Strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, golden berries, kiwis, dragon fruit, mango, peaches, some cherries. You can even add dry blueberries or dry strawberries, some mint. I'm gonna to top it off with homemade lemon curd. I'll share the recipe in the video soon, and I'm gonna use some fresh fruit. Like I said before, it's completely customizable. So if you want to impress a date or a significant other, you can put their favorites on it. And there you have it. This is such a joy to make and eat. Oh, and if you're wondering what reason number five is, well, learning how to whip egg whites is a really handy skill and a pavlova is great practice. Whipping up egg whites or meringues is great for angel food cake or my personal favorite, folding into pancake batter. I've even whipped up egg whites and added them into latkes or zucchini fritters. The point is, you made something delicious and you learned something really useful in the kitchen. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and if you want to know the secret to amazing scrambled eggs, check out my video here, and I'll see you next time.